Hi everybody. In this video, we are going to learn about variables. By the end of this lesson, students should be able to initialize variables, access variables, change a variable's value, and enumerate the benefits of using variables. As programmers, you will be creating a lot of variables in your programs. So this is a very important lesson. Let's begin. In programming, a variable is a tool that allows a programmer to access a value using a name. To create a variable, specify a name, and then assign a value to it using the equal sign. Another term that you might see that is used to refer to variables is the term identifier. Now, this one is a term that has a wider scope. It can also be used to refer to other types of names. For example, the name of a function, such as print, can also be referred to as an identifier because it is a name that identifies a specific function. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a variable. x equals 5. This is a variable named x with a value of 5. Here, we have the name of the variable, which is x, and the value, which is 5. We assign the value to the name using the equals sign. This is why this type of statement is called an assignment statement, because we are assigning a value to a variable. And then I will press enter to execute this assignment statement. Creating this variable will now allow us to access the value 5 using the name x. Here in the shell, to access a variable after creating it, you simply need to type its name and press enter. So if I type x and press enter, we see 5. After creating a variable, you can access it as many times as you want. I'll type x again and press enter, and it still gives me 5. But remember that if we were running this from a Python file instead, then you would have to use the print function. When accessing a variable, you do not put quotation marks around the name, because that would make it a string. If I place x in quotation marks, then this is not referring to the variable x that we created. Rather, this is referring to a literal string value that contains the letter x. So these two are completely different entities. If I press enter after typing this string, then the interpreter just echoes the same string literal back to me. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice creating a few more variables. Let's do this in the code editor. In the first line, I will type x equals 1. In the next line, I will type y equals 3.14. And in the next line, I will type z is equal to the string python. So now we have three variables. The first one has an integer. The second one has a float. And the third one has a string. Let's go ahead and print out the values. Print x, print y, print z. And then let's save this. And then if we run this, these print statements will output the values assigned to these variables and not the variable names themselves. So I will click Run. And here we see the correct values get printed out in the same order as the print statements in our code. Variable names are author-defined. This means that you, as the author of your own program, will be the one to decide what to name your variables. However, there are some rules that need to be followed. In Python, variable names can contain only the following characters. The uppercase and lowercase letters A to Z, the underscore, a variable name can also contain the numerical characters 0 to 9, except that they cannot be the first character in a variable name. Here are some examples 
of valid variable names. x1, x2, x3, underscore x, x, y, z, x, underscore y, underscore z. And here are some examples of invalid variable names. 1x and x, y, z, exclamation point. 1x is invalid because variable names are not allowed to start with a digit. They can contain digits as long as it is not the first character. XYZ exclamation point is invalid because exclamation points are not allowed in variable names. All special characters, except for the underscore, are not allowed in Python. Take note that in other programming languages, other special characters are also allowed. In Java, for example, the dollar sign is allowed. Variable names are also case sensitive. If you have a variable name that is a lowercase x and another one that is an uppercase x, then those two are separate entities. The Python interpreter will know that these are two separate and distinct variables. It will not be confused by them, although it might confuse anyone else reading your code, including yourself. So it might not be such a good idea to have these two variables in the same program. When naming variables, it is a good practice to use descriptive names. A descriptive variable name is a name that easily describes the value that is assigned to the variable. For example, let's say you want to create a variable that you will use for a person's age. Then instead of using x, maybe you can use age as the variable name. Age equals 25, for example. If you need a variable for a person's first name, then consider using first name as the variable name. First name equals Peter, for example. Using descriptive names is a good practice because it improves the readability of your code and makes it easier to understand. Some words, however, cannot be used as variable names. Programming languages will have these things called reserved words or keywords. A keyword in programming is a word that has a special meaning in the language. So you cannot use them as variable names because the programming language already uses those names for something else. In Python, here is a list of the keywords used in the language. These keywords are also case sensitive. In future lessons, we are going to learn more about some of the keywords that you see here. For now, just remember that you cannot use these words as variable names. At any given time, a variable can only be assigned a single value. You can't, for example, have a variable x that is both 5 and 7 at the exact same time. You can, however, change a variable's value in the future. And you can do this as many times as you'd like. So let's try that out. I'll create a variable x and assign a value of 5. Here we can say that we initialize the variable x with a value of 5. Initialization is the process of assigning a value to a variable for the first time. All right, so now in the next line, I will print out the value of x. So this print statement should give us 5. And then in the next line, I'll change the value of x by assigning a different one. To assign a new value, we do the same thing we did when we initialized the variable. We just type the variable name, x, and then the equal sign, and then the new value, say 7. So now here in line 3, the value of x is now 7. We did not create nor initialize a new variable. Rather, we simply changed the value. This is the same x variable that we created in line 1, except that now it has a different value. So if I print it again, this print statement is going to give us 7. Changing a variable's value is not going to affect the previous lines 
that have already been executed. Changing the value of x in line 3 is not going to affect the print statement in line 2 because by the time the interpreter gets to line 3, the instruction in line 2 would have already been executed and it would have already printed out 5. So this new value of x is only going to affect the lines that try to access x after line 3 until we actually change it again. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. Let's once again assign a new value to x. This time, let's give it a string. Let's say x equals Python. And then let's go ahead and print it out. In the Python programming language, when you change a variable's value, the new value can have a different data type. Here, we started off with integers first, and then we eventually used a string. Python allows this. We can change the value to a boolean, a float, or some other data type. But this is not the case with some other languages. With some other programming languages, you have to stick with the same data type as the first value that you assigned to the variable. Okay, so line one of our program creates a variable x with a value of five, and then prints it out in line two. So the expected output at this point is five. And then in line three, we changed the value to seven. And then we printed the variable again in the next line. So now the expected output here is seven. And then we changed the value again in line five. We changed it to a string that says Python. And then we printed it out again. So the expected output at this point is the word Python. So let's save this file, and then let's run it. And here we see the expected output. So why use variables? Why do we have to assign the value 5 to x? Why can't we just use 5 directly? Well, you can do that. You don't have to use variables, but they can be very helpful in many ways. For one, they make your program more readable and understandable, provided that you choose meaningful descriptive variable names. Say you have a variable named price, and its value is 9.99. When some other programmer reads your code, then the variable name gives them an idea of what the 9.99 value is about. Variables also make values easier to reuse. Here, I don't have to remember that the price is 9.99. I can just use the variable named price every time I want to access the value. Instead of using 9.99, I can say print price times 5 to get the total price of 5 items, for example. And then I can say print price times 0.7 to figure out how much the new price will be if we applied a discount of 30%. Variables will also make the program more flexible. You can easily edit variables and give them new values. If we needed to change the price of the product to 10.99, for example, then we can just go ahead and edit the price variable. We don't need to change anything else. When we run the program again, then the price will be 10.99. Without variables, then we would have had to change every single line that made use of the value 9.99. Right now, we only have a few lines of code, but imagine if we had a larger program that had thousands of lines instead. Without variables, then that program would be very hard to edit. So we've learned that you can also work with variables while in the shell. If I type q equals 5 and press enter, this variable q is going to be available all throughout this session. As long as I don't reset the shell or I don't close the IDE or the command line window, this variable q is going to be available. So if I type q and press enter, it's going to display the value assigned to it, which is 5. And then I can type q plus 2 and it's going to give me 7. Now, executing the instruction q plus 2 is not going to change the value of q. q is still 5. 
Here, we simply asked for the result of q plus 2. Nowhere in this instruction did we tell Python to update the value of q with the result. So if we type q again and press enter, this still gives us 5, because the value of q was never updated. It will only be changed when we actually assign a new value to it using the equal sign. So if in the next line I say q equals 7, then this changes the value of q to 7. So now if I type q again and press enter, we now see 7. Okay, so all throughout this interactive shell session, I'll be able to use the variable q as long as the session is active. But if I reset the shell or close the application, I will lose all the variables I currently have in this interactive session. Here in Thony, you can reset the shell by clicking the Stop Restart Back End button. So here, you can see that the shell has restarted. If I type Q and press Enter, we get an error message that says Q is not defined, which means that the variable Q does not exist in this new session. Okay, so to summarize this lesson, here are some important points. In programming, a variable is a tool that allows a programmer to access a value using a name. Variable names are author-defined. Variable names can contain letters, underscores, and numerical characters, but the first character cannot be a numerical one. Variable names are case-sensitive. Keywords of the language cannot be used as variable names because those words already have a special meaning in the language. Initialization is the act of assigning a value to a variable for the first time. A variable's value can be changed multiple times throughout the program. And finally, when used appropriately, variables can improve source code readability and can make it easier for the programmer to make changes to the code.